Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary. In today's tutorial we are working on this kind of triangle. I say kind of. During the tutorial I get you to the right size of the triangle and then I say if you, if you just want a little triangle you can head off on your own. But for the rest of us we will be using our triangle for and let me show you so you know and most of my regulars would know this but if you're joining us new yours truly has a pair of jeans right here oh i've moved everything out the way has a pair of jeans in green and i don't like this tight leg look okay i don't like them at all so what i'm going to do is cut that open it up and pop our triangle there giving it a retro 70s kind of look and it's going to be like that so your jeans will come out pretty much that flary if you are joining us to do that if you are joining us just to make the triangle I'll tell you when to stop you can go ahead um, and weave in your ends and head off on your own but for the rest of us we're going to do a base row plus a border row of single crochets all right we won't be attaching them to the jeans today because it does go for a very long time the tutorial and i apologize in advance so i'm not going to talk too much i am going to tell you you will need um and i'm showing you just quickly this is the color of a jumper that i'm working on at the moment there will be a row of green as well so i'm keeping in theme of that because i want to wear that jumper with these jeans okay so this is the yarn i use today and uh it's let me move everything out the way. It's called Clickeaton Country 8 ply. And an 8 ply is a number 3 or a DK weight overseas. 95 meters, it's 50 grams. Now, they've got your lot numbers and everything. It calls for a 4 millimeter hook. Yours truly is using a 4.5 uh, because I actually worked on a 4.5 for the jumper and I want to keep it um, in sync with the jumper. All right, so you will need very minimal, very, very minimal. I think I only used a few grams of each, so it's not too bad. You won't need a lot at all. And there's your different colors as well. So you'll be making one with me and the other one you will head off and make on your own. All right, you will need your hook, your scissors, a sewing needle, and you will need two stitch markers of your choice. If you don't have stitch markers, you can actually use a piece of thread all right now just before you go and do your triangle in the tutorial because I use different colors I cast off a lot and then turned my work throughout the tutorial I ask you if you want to just use one color you chain one turn your work and you slip stitch into the space I tell you to or the corner that I tell you throughout the tutorial. All right, so I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to let you head off on your own and create your gorgeous triangles. Good luck, guys. All righty, guys, we're starting off by using the blue, grabbing your tail end, wrapping it around your finger once and twice, holding it there and holding it down there. Pass your back loop halfway over your finger, hold it there. Pass the other loop all the way over, pop your hook in and give your work a tug. All right, now we're going to start off by chaining and a chain is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through once, yarn over twice, yarn over three times, yarn over four times. So we've chained four. Now what we need to do is slip stitch just at the top of that first chain that we did, just a very top loop right there. Put your hook in, pull a loop through. All right, just give everything a bit of a tug this way and you'll see that look with the little thread there. Just pull that loop through straight into that chain that's on your hook. Keeping all this separate because you're gonna work in that stitch right there. Now you're chaining one, two and three. And I've already almost lost my stitch there. There. Now you're going to put a double crochet. And that's a yarn over your hook. Straight into the space. Over everything. Pull a loop through. You should have one, two, three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull through the last two. And I just want to show you something real quickly. You can keep your hands there. Just to let you know that... 
This right here is the first stitch to your double crochet. The two loops that you see right next to it that are extremely tight for me, hopefully yours aren't as tight as mine, that's the first stitch you're going to slip stitch into at the end of the row or the round. You're not sure what that means yet, but you will in a minute. So grab a stitch marker or a piece of thread and pop it through the top two loops and you should have a little loop underneath there. So like that, grab your stitch marker and se I'm separating it because mine's really tight. <laughs> so later when I go to slip stitch, it's going to be <laughs> very difficult. Try not to do your chains too tight when you start up. All right, um, we're going to do another double crochet, yarn over your hook, straight into the center, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. You have three, the chains here will act as a double crochet, okay? So you have literally three double crochets, all right? Chaining one, two, and three. Normally it's a chain two to form a corner, but in this piece we are going to be chaining three. Yarn over your hook, double crochet in that space, and as you can see, I'm crocheting over my tail, okay? Not necessary if it confuses you, okay? And then you do a second double crochet. And then you do the third double crochet. Now we chain three. One, two, and three. Because we've done our three there, chain three, three there, chain three. We're going to do one last set of three double crochets. Yarn over your hook and into the space you go. Crocheting over the whole stitch with your second one and your third, which is your final double crochet for this round. I'll just grab that tail end and popping it at the back. Chain one, two, and three. You'll finish this round, but you need to slip stitch it to join. All right, now that's that little stitch I told you about earlier. I'm not going to be able to get my hook in there. <laughs> of a jaw so I might have to take my stitch marker out you try and get your hook in yours and if you can't I'll do a nice close-up here so you can see you don't need to put your yarn around your hook or anything you just need to grab your hook and pop it in that stitch it is better without the stitch marker I suppose so that's the first stitch of your double crochet right there it's a little V looking thing the one right next to it is the one we're going into that little chain right there all right, pull that loop through and that's your first part of your corner done. So you need to pull up a loop, make sure everything's correct before doing this and giving your work a cut. Whilst you've got it in your hand, just drop it there for one minute. Leave it like that, okay, because this part here, it's if you're doing what I'm doing, it's really important. If you're just doing a normal uh granny triangle uh, you could have turned your work slip stitched into the center and then continued but if you are changing colors like me this next step i'm going to be doing like as if we weren't changing colors so we're going to turn our work like that all right now you need to pop your new thread in any corner that you like you can pop it in the same corner that you just completed but I find, you know, yours truly doesn't like a lot of ends in the same space. So I'm just going to go to the nearest corner that doesn't have any ends. And that's this one right here. All right, let me blow that up a little bit. All right. Now, you grab your thread, popping it through your work. Pull your tail forward. This just kind of locks it into, into place. Okay. Chain three. One, two. Don't do this last stitch too tight. <laughs> three and now we can actually put our stitch marker in that stitch we couldn't do it before it was a bit awkward because we were trying to start our um, piece but now that it's started we can pop it in there see one underneath and two loops on top now two double crochets in that space I'm going over my tail and three now this is going to be the wrong side of your work. So I would leave that tail there. Yes, chain one and two. In this case, to get out of our corner, we are chaining two. When we're in the corner, we are chaining three. All right, so there we go. T 
to get into our corner you've got to skip one two three double crochets now there's that tail if it confuses you drop it and worry about it later but I'm going to crochet over it so I'm going to hold it there yarn over the hook into the corner with three double crochets one two, oops <laughs> two hello invisible two there <laughs> and three okay chain one two and three because we are in the corner okay still crocheting over that tail not necessary but that's what I'm doing three double crochets in the same corner one two and three now normally I would grab that tail and pass it at the back but this is going to be the wrong side so I'm going to leave it there to get out of our corner we need to chain two one and two to get into the next corner we need to put three double crochets one two and three and then chain three because we're in the corner one two three and we're going to pop three double crochets in the same corner two and three and to get out of our corner what are we doing we are chaining one and two now the only place to go is our very last corner which was the first corner that we started with our three double crochets but we need to complete that corner because each corner has three 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 so we need to put three three and we've already done our last three so we need to put three double crochets in there we've done our chain two three double crochets in that corner one oops two and three and now chain one two and three and now we're going to slip stitch in the top of oh, there we go <laughs> that stitch there I'm gonna take that stitch marker out and just pull that loop through to the loop on my hook yes chain one and let me show you what you have so far that is what you have so far all right kind of almost a triangle but not almost we're nearly there all right if you are not um, turning your work and using the same yarn go ahead and cut okay now we grab our very next color which is the pink okay remember we are turning our work before we start and once again yours truly you know doesn't like to start where there is a tail it doesn't matter but there's only one area that doesn't have a tail left which is that area right there grabbing your pink and let's bring that up and pulling a loop through and you start it like normal chain one two and three grab your stitch marker Popping it in that stitch again, like I said, as normal, and you've got your two double crochets here, like normal for now. Now, this is the right side, so pop your tail end at the back. This row here, right now, is different, okay, because it now has spaces before your corners, okay. Now, these spaces need to be filled in with three double crochets. So before you hop in there, we always chain one and two to get out of a corner and chain two to get into the corner. Once we're in the corner, we're chaining three. So chain your two and do three double crochets in the first space that you see. Two and three. Now you want to get into that corner, you need to chain two. One and two. And jumping straight into the corner with your three 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 double crochets two and three and chains one two three always three in the corner yeah 
And then three double crochets. One, two, and three. And now we're going along the sides again where we need to put three double crochets in there. Yes. So we need to chain two. One and two to get into that space with your three double crochets. One, two, three. Chain one and two to get out of the space. Now here's your corner with your thread. If you've already crocheted over yours, that's fine. But yours truly is going to be crocheting over that thread. So yarn over my hook and I'm going straight into the corner with my three double crochets. One, two, and three. Yes, chaining one, two, and three for a normal corner. Still doing another three double crochets. One, two, th three. All right, now remember this is the right side, so pop your tail at the back, chain two, one, two, to get out of the corner, and here is your next space that you've got available for your three double crochets. One, two, three. Yes, chaining one and two to get out of there. And in that corner, it's the end. We need to pop our three double crochets, our chain three, and then slip stitch to join like we did with the red. Okay, so three double crochets in the corner. One, two, and three. Chain one, two, and three. And there's your join. So you need to pop into that little stitch right there, pull a loop through, and pull it through to the loop on your hook, chain one, and cut your work. Whoops, I'm out of frame. Sorry, guys. All right, so there you go. We're starting to look. Oh, take out that stitch marker for starters. <laughs> We're starting to look. Uh, like a corn, I'm um, sorry, like a triangle. Almost. We're still a little bit out of shape, a little bit, yeah, it'll get there. Yes. So now what you're doing, flipping your work yet again. Okay. Now, because we're using a fourth color, there's going to be no space where there's no threads. They've all got threads. All right. So what I usually do is I go back to the blue thread. That's where I start from. So I turn my work pop my hook into the corner of the blue thread and then just grab the green your new color whatever your color is mine's the green and away we go take your little loop pull it through like normal pass your thread forward just to lock it into place chain one two and three grabbing your stitch marker Okay, now you are popping your two double crochets in the corner. One and two. And of course, this is the wrong side, so your tail can stay there. All right. This, again, is a different row, because before you only had one space where you put three double crochets. Here, you have two, and then you have the corner. So you have two spaces on each side, corner there, two spaces on each side. So now you need to put three double crochets into both of the spaces. So you chain one and two first to get out of the corner. Pop your three double crochets in that first space. Two and three. And you're chaining two to get out of this space too. One, two. Popping three double crochets into your next space, which is not a corner. So just three double crochets. And three, yes, chain one and two. And now we're jumping into our corner. This corner has a tail for me. I'm going to crochet over it. Again, not necessary. I'm going to do my three, three, three. So three double crochets, two and three. Chain one, two and three. 
and in my three double crochets. One, two, and three. All right, getting all tangled up here. <laughs> all right, we're out of this corner. Leave your thread here because this is the wrong side, yes? Chaining two, one and two. Jumping into your first space. You've got two spaces here again. So jump into your first space with your three double crochets. Chain one and two to get out of the space. Jump into your next space with three double crochets. Two and three. Chain one and two to get out of that space. And now we have our normal corner, which we do our three, three, three in. Three double crochets. That's two and three. Chain three. One, two, three. And again, three double crochets. Two and three. Chain one and two. Jump into that space with your three double crochets. And three. Chain one and two to get out. Jump into your second last space with your, whoops, three double crochets. chain one and two to get out now i said second last space because our corner is actually our last space that we're working into you are going to do three double crochets in that corner like we've been doing all along whoops like so now things are going to change here so just be weary we are chaining one two and three when we slip stitch to join, we're not going to cut our work, okay? So slip stitch to join into your stitch right there. Pull a loop through. Chain one like normal. Take out your stitch marker, but don't cut your work. All right, so pop your work down for a moment, and I'll just show you quickly what we're going to do. We are going to be doing another row of green on this side. Okay, so remember before how I talked to you about slip stitching and then going around the other way, that's what we're going to do. So all you're going to do here, just get those ends out of the way, literally is flip your work. Yes? Now, you're going to grab your hook, pop it back into the loop where you did your chain. And then you're going to jump into that space with a slip stitch. So pop your hook in the space, pull a loop through, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Okay? Now we are going to chain three, like normal. One, two, three. This is going to change this corner. Okay? So pop your stitch marker in there, like so. That's normal. You're still going to do your two double crochets. One. And two. Now let me just bring this out for a minute so you can see what I'm doing. In this corner, we are going to complete the corner. And when we finish this space over here, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain. So what you're doing here is you're actually finishing off your corner that you started with, which is chain one, two, and three, and doing three double crochets in the corner. One, two, and three. Yes? To get out of the corner, what are you doing? You know this part. This is simple. Chain one and two, but now you have one, two, three spaces. So what are you going to do? You're going to fill up those spaces. One, two, and three chain one and two, jump into your next space, one, two, and three, chain one 
chain one and two jump into your next space which is your last space before the corner one two and three and guess what you have a corner so you're chaining one and two to get into the corner and then you're just going to do your corner like normal one two three chain one two and three jump into the corner again and finish off your three double crochets two and three and of course you're chaining one and two to get out i'm going to lift that up to show you what you're going to do and then you are going to go along that side do that corner yes go along that side and I'm going to grab another stitch marker and I'd like you to do the same. Pop your stitch marker in your second last space there or your last space before the corner and go ahead and complete the rest of this row. Get to that stitch marker and I'll meet you up and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. All right, so go ahead, complete the row. You know how to do your corner with your 333. Three, three. It's chain two between each space. Get to there and I shall meet you up. Alrighty guys, here I am at the end of my row and I'll just get a little close for you. There you go. And that's where um, I told you to pop your stitch marker in. Take it out for now. And just do, make sure you've chained your two here. Just do your last three double crochets here. One, two and three. And again, chaining your one and two. Now, you've already got your three, three, three in the corner. Now, all you need to do is slip stitch to join, like you've been doing all along. Just slip stitching, like so. Pulling a loop through, pull up a loop. Now, we are going to cut this thread, okay? You're wondering why when we need to add more rows, and I'll explain why. Okay. Firstly, if you don't want to do the extra rows that I showed you in, in the promo, which is this one right here. All right, so it looks, initially, it looks like that. All right, and we now have an extra row here, plus a row of single crochets that we're going to do around the piece, just to close it all and make it look nice and neat. Now, if you don't want to do that, all you need to do now is weave in all your ends and your little triangle is now complete but for the rest of us we're going to do that okay for now i want you to turn your work over get a close-up of it and you are going to weave in a couple of ends the first thing we're going to do just quickly is weave in this uh first end that we did a lot of people think no no we've crocheted over you don't need to weave it in yes you do that will come out in the wash trust me it can come out in the wash and has many times before. So what you do is you're already in here, you go around it a little bit and then you go back the other way. And all you're doing is hopping right into your um, crochet. You're going under your crochet loops. Just check the front that you can't see the needle in there and you can't. Pull your loop through like that. Closes up your center a tiny little bit and then you're just going to go around once. Make sure you check your little space here. Right there. Threads everywhere here, aren't they? <laughs> Twice. And one more time. Check your front. There. Guess what? You're going to turn your work the other way and go back in a different section, of course, because you don't want to unravel what you just did. Oops, I forgot to check the front, but I'm pretty sure it was okay. Always check your, fr <laughs> your front, she says, as she didn't do hers now that was a bit thick so I'm wondering did it go through the front it's pulling a little bit I reckon it has so I'm going to take it out and just go through the top like that how's that perfect okay and there you go you can stop there you've done it three times we crocheted over it once we sewed it in a second time and now we sewed it in that third time right there that's three times all right now that's one that you need to weave in and just want to show you another one let's try this blue one right here i don't know the red one it's nice and bold we'll try that one so grab your little red one bold strong whatever you want to call it <laughs> yes i had to put red in it 
to my regulars are wondering what <laughs> she had to use the red now or your oh, I'm not even telling you what to do pop your needle through that there checking the front that you can't see the needle here you can see it there but it's just pointing out just check that you can't see it there and you can't pull the loop in through there and straight through and into the next and what that's going to do not only is it going to hide your thread but it's going to close your work up giving it a more defined look go back the other way again you are going into a different thread split the little red if you have to right there check your front you can't see the needle and you can't and go through the other way which is nice and tight now that means i'm not going to weave in anymore i'm done all right so now all you do is just give that work a cut making sure you don't cut your work and your red thread is done giving your work a more of a defined look yes that's what i want you to do head off on your own and weave in all your ends okay if you want to see exactly what i'm going to do with my square let's try triangle <laughs> oh i didn't just fail maths i failed uh you know everything else as well um then you need to join join me on our lives at 4 p.m wednesday afternoons or saturday 10 a.m uh, melbourne australia time that is that's every week okay if you want to see what i'm doing with my triangle however for now the rest of us who want to do exactly the same thing with me then go ahead and continue. All I want you to do is weave in all your ends, meet me back here, and I'll show you what we're going to do with one of your bottom row, whichever row that may be. All right, go ahead, weave in these ends, and I'll meet you back here in a moment. All righty, guys, I've weaved in all of my ends except this one here, but I'm going to crochet over that one, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So for those of you who are doing the jeans along with me, this is what you need to do now. Everything else is even here except this base row because, now let me show you quickly the base row so you know what you're looking at. These are my jeans. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. I've got them here because I just wanted to show you what I'm doing, right? And I'm using the green ones for this particular piece. Um, these are my favorite ones, except I don't like the fact that they don't flare out enough. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be popping this piece here. It's going to be cut along here, yes, spread like that out and then we attach the piece we're going to be sewing it along there whether we do it by hand or sewing machine it's another story i'll think about that but this is what i want i want that to be the jeans will be coming out like that by the time i'm finished so what this piece is now is that okay it's very nice it's cute it would have been okay but i didn't like it i wanted more of a wider look i wanted this to come out wider i wanted it to come taller and it didn't and if i did that taller this would come out wider and everything would become bigger so in the end i just did one row here turned it i think i turned it but i'll explain to you in a minute then did a row of single crochets around the whole piece it's just to keep it all into place and that's exactly what we're going to do here all right so grab your piece this is your work yes find the the piece that you want to be on the bottom i want that on the bottom because we can crochet over that little knot there it doesn't make a difference but that's what i want you need to flip your work because that's what we've been doing all along we're flipping our work grab your hook where your knot is just pop it in there yes turn it around and that's where we're starting easy super easy i think and grab your green yet again it's going to be a little bit different this row okay it'll start the same um, but a little tiny bit different okay so you're going to pull up your loop like normal chaining one two and three you will need that stitch marker again oh i don't think i left this loose enough <laughs> here we go pop it in in that center you're going to put two or double crochets like you would normally do in every round or most of the rounds okay now this is the wrong side see the bubbled area there 
that's your nice neat area this is the side that you weaved in all your ends in leave your tail there yes chain two one two because we're going to get out of the corner we're going to jump into the next space now i have a tail there and i'm going to crochet over it if you don't have it like if you've weaved it in that's great i'm going to put my three double crochet so this side of the work is normal all right Leave that tail then and chain one two I'm going to pop this on fast until we get to the corner, the first corner, and off we go. All right, so here we are, close to that corner. Two and three. Chain one and two. Now, we did three double crochets there. Chain two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two. We're going to jump in the corner and just do three double crochets. One, two, two, and three. All right, so that's where we are at the moment. Nearly knocked the stand down, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> that's where we are at the moment, all right? Now, you are going to chain one, like that, turn your work so you're now officially on the right side of your work okay so here it's a little tiny bit tricky but i'm sure you'll get it these little spaces you see there and there that's the stitch and inside these stitches all the way across you are putting single crochets now a single crochet we're going to pop it straight into that first hole the first space you see Right there, you pop your hook in, you pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through, two. Pop your stitch marker in. And of course, mine is far away. <laughs> and there you go. So pop your stitch marker in that stitch that you just did. All right. Now, you have a second double crochet so your stitch must go in there it's going through that space two loops on top and the post on the bottom and you do your single crochet yes do the same in the third one yes now in these two chain spaces you're doing two single crochets one just in the space right over the stitch two and then see these three stitches? You're doing your single crochet in each stitch. One, two, and three. Yes? Come to a space, two single crochets. One and two. Stitches, three single crochet. Yes, I think you're getting the picture. It's very basic. It's just, you know, a little tiny bit fiddly to get in there. But once you're in, if you haven't crocheted too tightly, two in the space, then you should be okay if it's not too tight. One in each stitch across, two and three. And that tight stitch there. And then two in the space, one and two. And then three in the stitches across, one, two, and three, two in the space, we're getting to the end, one and two, and then you do one in your first stitch, one in your second, and you're going to put one in that stitch marker right there, so you can pop that in if you like, I'm just going to take mine out because I think I twisted mine or split it or something, I don't know. So do your single crochet in that stitch right there, all right? But we're going to chain one and we're going to turn our work and in that stitch, around the whole stitch, we're going to put two single crochets. One and two. To finish off the corner, we're going to jump into the corner just below it and pop in a single crochet there as well, yes? And then three single crochets across. One, two, three. Yes, 
And now I'm going to pop this on fast for you. You're going to do your two single crochets, one in each, two single crochets, one in each, two, one in each, two, one in each. When you get to that corner, wait for me there. Okay, I'm just going to pop this on fast. I'm not going to leave because it's a lot easier for me to do it this way. One, two, and it's easier for you as well. So three across and away we go. two and three we now officially have a corner and in that corner space you're going to put three single crochets so one two three because it's a corner we want to keep the corner right now you're going to do three across move that stitch over to find your first one right there one otherwise you'll be one single crochet short two and three two in your space three across two and three two in the space three across And again, two in the space. We're almost there, guys. Three across. One, two, and three. Two in the space. One, and two. All right, now before we continue, we have our three double crochets, which we're going to put three in there. We're going to do that now. One, two, and three now remember that corner the first one how we added one in the base corner this is the base corner the row just before it we're going to pop a single crochet in there like that yes and remember how we put two single crochets around the post of that stitch there so that's what we're going to do two single crochets over that stitch one and two and then we would have put a single crochet in the corner chain one yes we don't need to do that because our single crochet is already there but we do need to chain one and slip stitch in to that stitch right there pull a loop through pull it through to the loop on your hook pull up a loop give it a cut and there you go that's what you have all right take out your stitch marker you now have one complete triangle there. All right, check that out. Perfect, perfect, yes. All right, so now I have two, okay? You need to do one more, yes? But before you do, don't forget, you need to weave in this end because this is the back, weave in that end. And with that last one, I didn't actually show you how to weave that last one in. Now, there's numerous ways you can do this. Um, I've been trying another way that I don't like, but I thought I would try another one. <laughs> You've got to try them all, guys. You've got to take a risk. Pop my needle in through the last chain that I did and pull it through. And there you go. Okay. Then I'll turn it around the back where the wrong side is. Find a stitch here that I can go into like so. Making sure you can't see the needle from the front and you can't which is good, pull that through and then find some stitches to go into like that. Check that you can't see the needle and you can't and there you go. So from here, you can do whatever you want. You can go into here and go around, check the front. You can do whatever you want, but weave that end in because you know what? It can come undone. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, okay? I know you've got a knot there, but it can come undone, all right? Be safe with your ends because, you know, people say, oh, but it comes undone in the wash. What do I do? What did I do wrong? And you didn't do anything wrong. You just, oh, that didn't work. Look at that. I split the whole yarn there. Um, you just 
probably didn't weave it in, that's all. So now it's done. Make sure you weave that end in. That is what we're looking at for our jeans. Oh, no, that's not right. Where is it? There. <laughs> oh, get it right, Mary. So there you go. There's your two points up the top. Let's bring that out. There's your two points. And there's your base row. That is extra wide because I wanted it wider than the rest of the triangle all right so thank you so much for watching don't forget guys you need to make one more if you're going to do what i'm doing and one day next week we will attach these to the jeans and i'll show you how to do that if you didn't want to cut your jeans i'll show you how to attach it without it being cut but yours truly wants my jeans to be flare and i have some special reasons why which i'm going to show you in next thursday's first Thursday of the month a very very interesting one that one you've got to be there for that there will also be a giveaway included that plus there'll be some shout outs as well very big first first Thursday of the month uh, I know it should have been done last Thursday but you know what I wanted to get these projects out first <laughs> so join me next week and we will attach these to our jeans and also don't forget to join us on first Thursday of the month so you can work out what this looks like on included with some special items that I purchased that you may find interesting very very interesting all right so thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys pretty much already do for me and all I want to say right now is check out our gorgeous triangles very nice <laughs> ciao for now